One thing I've been meaning to get into for a long time is motherboard repairs. I've definitely always wanted to learn how to solder on stuff like this. Recently when working on this Game Boy Advance, I broke off the inductor. By some miracle, I managed to solder it back on, but there's definitely easier ways to solder. One tool that I've been really wanting to get for a good while is a digital microscope. I think a digital microscope would make these soldering jobs a lot easier. So today we're checking out something a little different than we usually do. And I'm wondering if a digital microscope can make you better at soldering if you're an absolute beginner. These are pretty small to see, and a lot of these jobs and mods require very precise soldering. So today I thought we could take a look at a digital microscope to see if it's worth the purchase. Today we're going to take a look at this microscope from Endinstar. If you don't know, they're well known for making really good microscopes. Mine was checked by customs, so you know it's going to be good. Let's open this box, hook this up, and see if it makes me any better at soldering. Fair disclaimer as well, this was sent over by the company, but they're not seeing this review before it goes up, and of course all opinions are my own. Even though they sent this over, if I don't like it, I'll definitely tell ya. Mine shipped directly from China using UPS, and it took about 3-5 to five days to come here to Canada. If you're buying it off the official website, my guess is they're probably going to ship it with UPS, and if you're in Canada, just be careful with import fees. However, if you're interested in buying one of these, I highly recommend checking out Amazon, as these are widely available there. The shipping is also going to be a little quicker, so let's just open this up and take a closer look. In the box, we find the user manual, and make sure you keep this so you can refer back to it on how to use it. This covers everything that you're going to need to know, and some of the specifications about the microscope. The one that I have here records in 4K, 24 FPS. We have a 24 megapixel photo mode. It has a micro SD card slot for recording video, and it also has HDMI output. Looks like you get quite a lot in the box as well, so you get the microscope, a metal stand, three different lenses. We also have a slide holder, a remote, a dimmer cable. It comes with an HDMI cable, a USB cable, a few different slides, tweezers, and a bug box. There are instructions here on how to set it up as well, so let's see what else is in the box. We also have a quick start guide on how to set it up. And fortunately, they have really good padding in this. The first thing I see in the package is the monitor itself. This is a pretty big screen, and I'm actually surprised it's so big. To put this into perspective, here's the broken Game Boy Advance that I need this to work on. It's about two Game Boy Advances wide, and a little over one and a half Game Boy Advances tall. There's a lot of stuff in the box, so let's take a closer look at what else there is. We got a simple USB charger. Looks like this is rated for about 10 watts at 2 amps. It looks like we have all the tools required to build it. There's a couple slides in here as well, and a pair of tweezers. I also have a 32 gig micro SD card in mine. That's kind of nice, but I'll probably put a bigger one in there. And we have the USB-C cable. This is USB-A to USB-C. And there's a 90 degree angle on there. It's nice I included this because I don't have any right angle adapters. There's a couple bolts in here to hold it together. We also have the short range lens and the long one in this box. I don't think I'm going to use the L1, but if I need a really good close up of something, I'll definitely check this out. I also think this short one might be a little too short, but we'll check these out just to see what everything looks like. They of course send a remote, and I believe this is maybe the slide box. Looks like they give us lots of different compartments on the base. This will be really nice for keeping track of all the different screws. I'll set these aside and see what else there is. There's two more base plates, and these ones have slightly bigger compartments. We got the HDMI cable. There's a bar we can use that has a little slots for all our tools. This is actually built really nice, and it's solid metal. We got this for the bottom of the stand. This attaches to the stand. They have some really good gator clips on them, and these feel really solid. The metal adjustment is really durable, and it holds its position really nice. There's a little base to work the soldering on. Mine's kind of dirty, I'm not sure why. My guess is they just checked everything and some of the oil got off. This is not a big deal. And one of the last things in the box is the base plate itself. And this is solid metal. It feels pretty thick too. There's two little lights on the bottom we can use to position to get a better picture. And on the bottom of the stand, there's some rubber feet that should stop the base from sliding around. Overall, I'm pretty impressed. This whole thing feels extremely solid. Let's set this up and check it out.
The microscope is on the back of the screen, so be very careful. According to the manual, the best one to use for circuit boards is the L lens. This is going to give us 60 to 240 times the zoom. The A lens is going to give us 18 to 720 times. And this is going to be roughly what it looks like. The D lens is crazy, going up to 1800 to 2040 times the zoom. This is for microscope slides, so we're probably not going to be using this one. Let's put on the L lens. I think the L lens is going to be a good match for what I'm doing. Well, I got everything set up, but it's pretty big. That's all I'm noticing. There is a lot of space on my desk though, so when I'm not using this, I can put this off to the left by my window and then just pull it over when I need to use it. I am also really digging all the space that they have on the base unit. There's lots of space for screws and everything else. The compartments interlock into each other, so it's pretty easy to set it up. Let's turn this on and take a closer look at the microscope itself. Well, you can tell it's been a long day. I turned it on and all I could see is black and... Gee, I wonder why. I gotta say I really like this rubber cover. Not only is it a good mat for soldering and that's obviously what it's for, but it's soft and it protects your screen and it appears to be working pretty good. There are a couple things that I have noticed from setting it up though. The HDMI that they included in the box didn't work, so I had to use my adapter for my HDMI out connected to my capture card, but does appear to be working now, and everything is showing nice and sharp. You definitely need to move the lights around just to get the best picture. There's a little bit of noise, but I don't think it's too bad. One of the things that I'm noticing is I really wish you could get rid of the video mode feed in the top left corner. Let's go through the menu and take a look at the options. Pressing the menu brings up the video settings, so you can change the resolution from 4K 24fps down to 1440p 30, or you can go down to 1080p. 4K looks pretty sharp, 1440p doesn't look too bad either. I feel like a little bit of the noise might have disappeared on the 1080p 60, but it's pretty hard to tell. I'm going to leave mine in 4K mode, there's an exposure setting. And that can brighten it up a little bit, but it does also increase the noise. There's a sharpness setting. I'm not sure what I like better, soft or normal. Strong is a little strong, so I'll probably leave it on normal. The contrast is gonna boost the contrast, so I'm just gonna leave that on normal. If you press menu, then menu again, and press enter, you can go over and set up your Wi-Fi. There's some grid settings, time and date, your language. If you wanna change the language, you can format your micro SD card. And this is the version that I'm testing it on. I'm not sure if there's a new version, but I'll have to check for updates. It looks like if you turn on Wi-Fi, it enables an SSID, so you can use this wirelessly. But I don't want to do that, so I'm going to shut that back off. The stand is a little wobbly. I think this should be okay. I might put a little piece of paper in the bottom corner just to hold it in place. We have digital zoom. And that can get pretty damn close. We can adjust the exposure with the menu around the enter button. If you press the plus on the controller, this enables the crosshair mode to center in on what you're doing. The button's in the bottom middle. It looks like a half filled square with a plus and a negative. This controls the contrast. The knob on the lens itself allows you to adjust the focus of the video. So you can fine tune that and get it looking pretty sharp. I do wish there was a way to disable the on-screen display. I don't really want to see the Wi-Fi setting in the top right, and I don't really want to see the date or the time on the top left. The A lens gives us some pretty good amplification, and it almost looks like there's more detail. This is with the lens backed the entire way up. So let me move the actual microscope just a little bit closer to the subject. Yeah, this one does seem to give us a little bit better detail. Right now I'm about 5 inches away from the actual motherboard. Once you get the lights positioned, it's pretty easy to see all the details. With Streamlabs, I do have to set my setting to 1080p. I can adjust this to 60fps though. You can also just use device defaults and that seems to work just fine. So what I think we should do now is try soldering with this and see how it goes. To test this microscope out, I thought we could do a little experiment. I got this little practice board off AliExpress and I've done a few components on there just to try them out. I didn't really like how these went on, 
but I did all this basically by hand. So I'm going to try using the microscope on these smaller components just to see how it goes. I did one by hand. Let's try up here and let's start a brand new one. My camera seems to have a really narrow field of view so there's not going to be much detail on the edges of the video. We're just going to try this one here and see what it looks like. I do believe in using the right tools for the right job so I grabbed some of this 0.6 millimeter Fresno solder. I'm using some No Clean Flux Paste by MG Chemicals. I got my handy ceramic tweezers that I've used in a couple of videos, a simple flux brush, and a Pinesel soldering iron. So I don't actually have much soldering experience, but I've seen it done many times before on video, and I'm pretty good at copying what I see done. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of flux down. These are pretty small components, so I'm going to try doing the best I can without the microscope first, and then we'll compare after. This is going to be pretty difficult, but I'm going to try my best. These components that I'm going to be soldering are really small. You can barely see them on the tip of the tweezers. So what I think I'm going to do is just hold this in spot over the thing. Then I'm going to heat up one of the solder pads and just drop it into place. We'll see how that goes. I don't really know if this is the right component either. It almost looks like it goes on this one. Let me see what else I got in this little kit. Maybe I grabbed the wrong one. I think this one might be the right size. But it's just for practice anyways and I don't expect this board to be working when I'm finished with it. So. Let's just try to put this on here and see how it goes. Now that we got it on, let's try it under the microscope and see how that one goes. Looking at it a little closer, that doesn't look really good, does it? I definitely think it's on there, but yeah, it doesn't look very nice. Let's take a closer look underneath the microscope. That doesn't look good at all. It's on there pretty solid. Let's just try another one right underneath it and see how that goes. This is a lot easier to see under the microscope. Put a little bit of flux, not too much. Perfect. Put a little bit on the tip. Hands a little shaky though. Guess we can just touch up the other side as well. This one was pretty easy to do without the microscope, but it sure helps you with the alignment and definitely getting the right amount of solder on there too. I need to get something to hold down these boards as well. I'm noticing this sliding around a little bit, so that's not ideal. I'm pretty happy with that actually. The focus adjustment on the lens works really well too. If I wanted to bring something into focus that's a little closer, that's pretty easy to do. Then I can just focus in on the main board. If you're doing the recording on the microscope itself, it does appear to be better quality as well. I tried this on screen capture and I wasn't really impressed with the quality, but this seems to be a lot better. So if we do this without flux, it's not going to look very pretty. Well, that's not bad actually. I guess since I'm just being quick on here, I think I'm really impressed with this microscope so far. It makes it a lot easier to see and it makes it easy to line things up. It does seem to have a very narrow field of view though. It's obviously focused directly in the center, but it starts to get a little blurry around here. This is of course with the microscope this close. If you backed it up a little bit, this focus range would be a lot bigger. But it's pretty impressive and I'm actually quite happy with it so far. Since we finished those, let's clean those both up with a little isopropyl alcohol. 
even before this dries, you can see quite the difference in results between just eyeballing it versus with the microscope itself. So yeah, this is a pretty good kit, and I'm very impressed with it so far. That was a lot easier than it was the first time I did this. I think I do need to pick up a few tools now that I have a microscope, like something to hold down the board. I picked up something on AliExpress the other day, so hopefully it does the trick. I might pick up a few more of these test boards, just because they're pretty nice to practice on. Another thing that I found really helpful was when you're using this, you also have these little helper arms to hold anything that you need as you're soldering. They're not the sturdiest, but I think they do a pretty good job as long as you're not moving it around a lot. This does, however, work for small PCB boards, and if you need to turn the board to get a different angle, it does work really well for that. We also have these light arms, and I've found the best thing that works is actually putting them out further than having them spread the light over a further distance. If you have it directly over the item like this, you are going to get a lot of glare, and that's going to throw off the exposure on your camera. It is a little tough for me to review something this big. There's also an adjustment knob at the top that lets you move the microscope up and down quite a bit. I do wish this had a little bit more range though. If I wanted to drop this down and get a closer look without actually swapping the lens, I can just loosen it, then just drop it down ever so slightly. And you are going to have to adjust the focus, but it does seem to do a pretty good job. With the A lens, I keep this about 40% of the way down. I do suggest getting some sort of mount for your PCBs. That's the only thing that I've really noticed so far. The screen is kind of plasticky and the build quality is just so-so, but all the frame itself is a solid metal. I do wish that they put a slightly better screen on here, but it does a pretty decent job. On the back of the screen we have the microSD card and I've stuck a 256 gig in there for now just to record. We also have the USB cable and the HDMI out. The HDMI out that I was sent with the kit didn't work, so I had to use the one that I had on hand to get that working. If you plan on using this just to record to the microSD card, which is what I recommend, considering that's going to give you the highest quality, you're only going to need this one USB. But if you want to use the lights on the base, you are going to have to run a few extra cables. All of this. Because this is all part of the base, you have to use all these extra cables just to use the lights. There's a small barrel jack plug that goes on the base of the microscope. Connected to the same plug is a right angle USB. This is going to power the actual monitor and the microscope itself. This is going to power the base with the lights. And on the other end is of course the USB-A. I've been actually mostly powering this with the power bank on my desk. As soon as you connect this to the USB port on your PC, it is going to ask you if you want to use this as a camera or for data transfer. So I'd recommend just plugging this into a power source. Overall, this is a really good microscope and you have a nice big working area. You got lights on the base and some clamps to hold down your PCB. The clamps work okay, but I do recommend getting something to hold these down. You can make a lot of the adjustments directly on the microscope itself. I would say the biggest negative to this entire setup is the build quality of the monitor and it also has just a slight amount of wobble. This is pretty easy to correct though, and I would just recommend putting a piece of paper or something underneath one of the corners of the stand. I don't think you'll have any issues then. The build quality is good enough, but it is made out of a light plastic. Regardless, if you're looking for a microscope to help you get into soldering and device repairs, this is definitely something I could consider. I do recommend picking up a few of these practice PCBs to work on, and I'll leave this one linked in the description if you're interested in picking it up. If you have any questions regarding the microscope or soldering in general, make sure to ask in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and as always, thanks for watching.